Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss 32 important points from need point of view. The topic is diseases associated with salivary glands. Now we shall see ducts, their other names and its location. First being submandibular gland, contains submandibular duct that is also called as Wharton's duct. It opens at the side of the lingual frenum that is carincula sublingualis. Point number two, sublingual gland contains sublingual duct that is also called as Bartholin's duct. It opens near submandibular duct. Now several minor ducts open along the sublingual fold independently. Point number three, parotid gland contains tensin's duct that opens near maxillary second molar in the buccal mucosa. Now we shall see few important terminologies. Point number four, silosis or siladenosis is a non-inflammatory, non-neoplastic enlargement of the salivary gland. Point number five, siladenitis is an inflammatory disease of salivary glands. Point number six, silolithiasis is the occurrence of salivary duct stones in salivary glands and its ducts. Point number seven, siloliths are most common in the Wharton's duct or submandibular duct due to its tortuous course. Point number eight, siloliths are usually crystalline in nature and are composed primarily of hydroxypatite. Point number nine, most common cause of facial palsy is parotid tumor. Point number ten, multiple nerve lesions of head and neck region is the reason for adenoid stick carcinoma or cylindroma. Point number eleven, necrotizing silometoplasia is a benign inflammatory lesion of salivary gland that affects mostly the heart palate region. Point number 12, cylindroma or adenoid cystic carcinoma contains basal cells that are arranged in honeycomb or Swiss cheese pattern. Now moving on to Jogren syndrome, point number 13, silography of Jogren syndrome shows cherry blossom or branchless fruit laden tree appearance. Point number 14, MRI of Jogren syndrome shows salt and pepper appearance. Point number 15, the normal salivary rate in a normal individual is 5 ml per minute, but in Jogren syndrome patients, it is 0.5 ml per minute. Point number 16, histological alterations in Jogren syndrome shows intense lymphocytic infiltration of gland replacing SNR structures but preserving lobular architecture, presence of epi-myo-epithelial islands and atrophy of glands. Point number 17, the labial minor salivary gland biopsy is considered to be the best diagnostic criteria for salivary component of Jogren syndrome. Point number 18, breakup time, Schimmer's test, quantitative Rose Bengal test is used to test the lacrimal gland function in Jogren syndrome patients. Now moving on to mumps, point number 19, mumps triad is composed of epidemic parotitis, ochitis, euphoritis and pancreatitis. Point number 20, adult male encounter orchitis as the most common complication, whereas in children we get to see meningoencephalitis, that is point number 21. Now moving on to 22, mumps is an acute non-separative siladenitis. Now let's see about Wharton's tumor. Point number 23, papillary cystadenoma lymphomatosum or adenolymphoma are the synonyms of Wharton's tumor. Point number 24, Wharton's tumor contains chocolate colored fluid. Point number 25, Wharton's tumor is the most common seen in men due to smoking and Epstein-Barr virus. Point number 26, extra vestation mucosal is more common whereas retention mucosal is true retention cyst. Point number 27, Spindle cell carcinoma is a variant of squamous cell carcinoma. Now for this, proliferation and dropping of basal cells to spindle cell elements is an important histologic phenomenon for spindle cell carcinoma. Point number 29, sausage string appearance is associated with sylodochitis. Point number 30, caries associated with xerostomia affects gingival third and the incisal cusp tips. Point number 31, most common benign tumor of salivary glands is pleomorphic adenoma. Most common parotid cancer is mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Thank you.